guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach. Uh, today, we are going to talk a little bit about excessive licking and chewing um, in our dogs, of course, <laughs> um, not with us. When our dogs are excessively licking or excessively chewing, um, we know that, you know, licking is normal, chewing is normal because they have itches just like we do. Um, and some licking is normal, they clean themselves that way, but excessive licking and excessive chewing, that's something we need to talk about. When your dog is excessively licking or excessively chewing, that's what this video is about today. Uh, because I see this uh, topic come up not necessarily as the initial question but as part of a question in a lot of different dog groups that I'm in online um especially when when it's referring to you know medical issues so real quick I'm so excited that I have just this year launched um to the public my new ebook seven miracle steps for training your dog in this ebook I lay out everything for you. Everything I teach um, on my initial consultation to all of my in-home clients, it really sets you up. It sets the foundation for training your dog. You're gonna love it. Go grab your copy of Seven Miracle Steps. Let's see if I can get that in the frame. B-I-T dot L-Y slash Seven Steps Dog Training. I'm so excited to get this out to you. If somebody could post that in the comments because while I'm on the live video, I can't type this in. So it's bit.ly slash seven steps dog training. Go grab your copy. You're going to love it. Um, okay. So back to the topic at hand, excessive licking and chewing. So if your dog is excessively licking or excessively chewing, the first thing we want to rule out is that there is, isn't some kind of medical issue going on because when there are a, a lot of things can be happening if they're excessively licking or chewing um there could be a wound that they're trying to tend to and you know some small scratches you know they're gonna go away in a few days no big deal but there could be a wound there that you haven't seen because you know they have a lot of hair so you want to check on that um they could also have some underlying medical issue um so you definitely want to get that checked out and they also, and this goes for, you know, licking or chewing, they could have um, a food or environmental allergy. So we definitely want to take the time, um, seek medical advice, um, talk to your veterinarian, get them in for a visit, get, in, get them in for a checkup to see if any of these things are going on, to see if they have some wounds that, that need to be attended to, um, if there is a food or environmental allergy that is causing your dog discomfort, that is causing them to excessively lick or chew because, um, you know, these things are easily treated, especially, um, you know, wounds are gonna heal as long as you provide the proper medical attention. Um, and any, any other sort of underlying medical issue, your veterinarian will be able to help you out with. And I highly recommend um, anybody who isn't seeing a holistic veterinarian, I highly recommend checking out uh, the AHVMA, the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association has a listing of holistic veterinarians um, across the country. So you can find one in your area. Highly recommend seeking out a holistic veterinarian, especially if you have an animal with a food or environmental allergy um, because there are so many things that we can do for our pets um, to help improve their overall health that traditional western medicine doesn't account for um, i love my veterinarian and she is not a holistic veterinarian um, so i but she understands that those that holistic approaches are what I prefer in my animals when at all possible. I'm not opposed to Western medicine by any means. If my animals need, um, you know, treatment through Western medicine, they're going to get it. Um, 
but I, I do prefer holistic approaches to medicine uh, when possible. And she understands that and we work together and I bring her research and I, you know, these are all great things. For example, for food allergies, I, I feed my dog a species specific biologically appropriate raw food diet. Um, so that in itself takes care of a lot of issues that may, that a lot of dogs have, especially skin, um, skin issues that they have because she's on a species specific diet. So work with your veterinarian, find a holistic veterinarian at the AHVMA. I think it's .org, but don't quote me on that. I'd just Google it. Um, so those are a couple of things that could be going on if your dog is excessively licking or chewing. So again, they could have a wound that they're tending to. There could be some other underlying medical issue. They could have a food allergy or they could have some environmental allergies too because our pets do have seasonal allergies just like we do. They can be allergic to grass and pollen. They can be allergic, I mean, mold in the house. It's gonna affect you, but it's gonna affect them probably first. Um, they're much smaller. So what can you do if you have exhausted those? There, there's nothing medically going on with your dog and they're still excessively licking or chewing. Chances are your dog has anxiety or they're bored. So if they have some sort of anxiety, then we need to work with them to build their confidence. And fortunately, a lot of the things we do to build confidence in our dogs is also what we do to alleviate boredom in our dogs. So what you're gonna wanna do is make sure they're getting plenty of physical exercise, that you're taking them out for a walk every day, um, and that you, if, if they're runners, some dogs love to run, that you take them out for a run whenever possible. Um, you wanna provide mental enrichment as well. And so you want to have, you know, fun games and activities, lots of playtime with your dog. Um, so all of these things that you can do to alleviate boredom in your dog um, are also going to help to build confidence in your dog and can help in alleviating the excessive licking and excessive chewing if these are things that your dog is doing. Um, so I have a couple of questions. What is the name of the food you use? So a lot of people who feed a raw diet to their pets, a uh, biologically appropriate species specific diet, uh, create their own. So they do uh, like a DIY. Um, and there are a couple of different methods to, to a raw diet. There's a prey model and there's a barf model. Um, and then there's kind of like a Frankenbarf model. So there's a lot of information that I can provide you and really it doesn't fit quite into this video, but I'll be happy to make another video about it. Um, and let's see, do, oh, can you make your own food and do you have recipes? Oh, I didn't really answer the other question. So, um, the brands of pre-made raw, there are a lot out there. Um, the ones, and check what's available where you live because not everything is available all over the country um but we use a brand called darwin's natural pet food and another brand called answers pet food i'm really fond of the answers pet food brand especially if you find that your dog or cat has food allergies because answers actually ferments their food and what happens when you, so say you, you have found that your dog is allergic to chicken or they have a food sensitivity to chicken. Very common if you have um, your dog, <laughs> my cats are running around <laughs> um, on uh, boards that like are going across the top of, anyway they're making a lot of noise and my dog is reacting and going, it is making me laugh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so answers ferments their food. So say you have an animal with, say they're, they have a sensitivity or an allergy to chicken. Very, very common with dogs who are fed a kibble diet. Um, so because answers ferments their food, a lot of people think, oh, well, I can't feed chicken now. Well, when you ferment that protein, you actually change the molecular structure. So there's a good chance that your dog still could eat 
chicken if you buy the Answers food brand, but I digress. So those are the, um, let's see, let's see. I've got some, what the heck are all those models? Yes. Uh, okay. And there are, um, a lot of really great recipes. Uh, when you make your own homemade food, and, and we'll do more videos about all of this because I'm getting a ton of questions about um, making your own dog food. I appreciate that and I love that, yes, my office sounds like a zoo. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. I love that you're asking questions about nutrition and I am happy to make more videos about nutrition and fully answer and thank you some of these questions. Is there somebody walking down the street? Good girl, thank you for letting me know. Okay, so <laughs> back to the excessive licking and chewing. Yes, your dog could have a food allergy. They could have an environmental allergy. They could be um, licking a wound. All of these things you need to check with your veterinarian and rule those out. Um, and then again, if you have ruled out any medical issues with your dog, they are still excessively licking and chewing. Chances are they are either bored or have anxiety. So um, we talked a little bit about what to do if your dog is bored or has anxiety, and that is to exercise them more, both physically and mentally. You need to be able to provide, um, provide everything that they need, biologically speaking, and that is physical and mental exercise. So that is basically what we do when our dog is excessively licking or chewing. That's how we figure out why, and then you figure out the why, and then you can treat it. Um, feeding them right, I'm gonna have to comment, feeding them right is much cheaper than vet bills. It absolutely is. So, um, all right guys, I appreciate all of the questions and comments today, that was great. If you have any other questions or comments, whether you're watching this live or you're watching this um, at a later time, I'll come back. To it. I get a notification if you post on this video, if you post a comment, I'll get a notification. I'm happy to come back and answer your questions, so post them below, whether they are about dog training, dog behavior, heck, ask me about cat behavior, know quite a bit there too, uh, dog nutrition, cat nutrition, I'm thrilled to answer your questions. Just post them in the comments. Um, make sure you're following me on social media. That way you never miss another video. And um, hey, if you like this video, if it helped you out, give it a like. I appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to join the Train Positive group on Facebook. Um, it is a, a closed group on Facebook. It is a safe place for you to come and ask questions and share information about your dog, post pictures. Love to see all of that. So don't forget to join the Train Positive group. Follow me on social media and um, go ahead, ask away. Ask any question you have about dog training, dog nutrition, dog behavior, cat behavior, cat nutrition, go ahead and ask. I'll be thrilled to make a video for you and answer your question. So with that, I will see you in the next video.